Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be showing you how to wire up a Rotax DD2 race engine. So let's get to it. Welcome back to Power Public YouTube channel. Thanks to everyone that has been subscribing, following us along on Instagram and Facebook, and signing up to Patreon. We really appreciate it. Today's video, we're going to be showing you how to wire up the new DD2 racing machine here at Power Republic. And we've got a DD2 race engine. It's already on the car. You can click the link in the description below if you haven't seen the first episode. So today's video, we're going to be running through the wiring harness, how to hook it all up. Now, this is uh, a Series 1 Evo battery box. We've got the latest edition um, mounting bracket, but the ECU is over on the engine. On the newer version, it's over near the battery. So it's a bit of a mixed bag here. But stay tuned and we'll show you how to wire it all up. So what we've got here is the battery bracket. Now we're just prepping the brackets here on the bench. And then we're going to install it on the car. And also too, we're going to add the little starting solenoid to the front of the battery bracket. This is two M5 screws. Do them up with the Phillips head screwdriver and an 8mm ratchet spanner if you've got one. Just fit the rubber, all good. Now it's time to put it on the cart. You can either move it forwards or backwards. The clamps are universal. They just slot on there. And the little steel guy goes underneath. Do those two, oh, drop the screw on the ground first. <laughs> now do the other, pick up the parts you dropped before, do the screws up. Move the, we use the battery bracket and put it in the really back position here on the DD2, right near the back seat stay. Now for the rotary switch. Remove the Phillips head screws. Okay, so one of the weak links of the uh, new Evo upgrade kit was the wiring harness and especially these little switches. Now this is the rotary switch on the first of the Evo, so the Evo 1. And then there was a rocker switch, which is on the current Evo spec switch. Both we do have a little bit of problems with. This one here, if you do have to change one, so looking at the back of the switch, you have the start terminal here, the center terminal is in the center, and then the ignition terminal is at 12 o'clock. And use these little parts here as your reference so that if you're doing it at home, you can easily find which terminal's which. And also too, you can also, you can see here this one's marked ignition, this one's marked an S for start. So you can do that as well. So you can see on the harness here, the word center, start, and ignition. So now it's just a matter of marrying up the, um, the right wire to the right, right terminal and just screwing it in nice and tight. So now with the trusty old Phillips head screwdriver, we're just gonna do those uh, screws up, so screw the harness to the terminals of the, rocket, uh, the rotary switch. Now we've done that, we're going to install the rotary switch into the battery bracket cover. It's all good to go. <coughs> now we've got that done, we're going to put the harness onto those two terminals of the solenoid. Pull the rubber caps back, do up the two 10mm nuts, and you're good to go. If you're like me and you're a very forgetful man, don't forget to put this little guy on. So you take that off. Like so. And then there is this little guy here. And he lives on there. And then this guy goes back on. And we do it all up. And we're now good to go. Make sure when you do this guy up that you have this terminal up high enough so that you can get, this is your battery charger, because we've got to be able to get the positive terminal under the battery and the negative over here. Okay, so now we have got the harness all in position. It's just a matter of putting the lid on the battery box, turn up its retaining screw, 
installing the top part of the rotary button just with a little screw in the center there it's got a hex drive oh sorry a square drive underneath and now we're just going to tidy up the harness with the, some zip ties obviously we're going to make sure it's all properly secured so it doesn't drag on the ground that's pretty important a couple extra zip ties just to neaten the job up now we just go back and trim all the zip ties off with the sideies now over here forgetful old Des I forgot to put the wiring harness under the engine okay there's not enough room there to put the crank angle sensor wire between the engine and the chassis rails so you've got to loosen the engine off lift it up a little bit and then you can plug the crank angle sensor into the wiring harness and then screw the crank angle sensor back into the crankcase there you go perfect now we can uh, screw the engine back down now we're using a rattle gun here just nice and gently just to get the screws started okay don't go too crazy with that and then just tighten them up with the um, t-bar M6. Now for the final part of the job, we're just going to assemble all the electronics onto the rubber isolating brackets. This one's stainless steel. And that's the rave valve. It's going on with its two little screws. Now we've got the little rubber isolators. They go between the two plates and just held on with some uh, M6 nylock screws. Nuts, sorry, nylock nuts. Let's get them into position. You can see on this one, this is the uh, Series 1 Spec Mark II, where we've still got the ECU over near the coil. So in later versions, that will be over in the ba new battery, battery box in the little silicon house to stop the vibrations. We're uh, using a little, little rattle gun there. And there you have it. So now we're just going to install the assembled bracketry onto the go-kart. It's just got the one M6 cap screw going through the base of that and then those two prongs fit over the crankcase. And then it's a matter of just um, plugging all the sensors into the harness. It's pretty straightforward. Connect the earth strap. Make sure it's on the, the one closest to the engine, not on the other side that's insulated. And then we're going to tie the harness back to the coil there and then obviously the harness down here to the bracket now this is to stop the all the harnesses weight when it's vibrating as you're driving it pulling on all the sensors and breaking all the pins out so you can see i zip tie those back to the sensors and then we're just going to put a couple extra zip ties on now just to really neaten the job right up that's the shift cut wire Get that out of the way. Rained out, get the zip tie out. Go back, cut them all off. Voila. So this spare wire in the Rotax wiring harness is actually the DD2's shift cut wire. And it's gonna go over here onto our gear selector unit when I show you on the gear selector installation video. And uh, what happens is that when you pull on the gear selector, there's a little bit of pressure and a spring comes across and makes contact with the engine and it cuts the ignition so that the, the gears are free to change from first to second or second to neutral and in back into first. So there you have it. That's the Rotax Max DD2 wiring harness installation process. Now all, all the engines are very similar and slightly different if you've got the non-Evo, Evo 1 or Evo 2, but hopefully that sheds some good light on how to get it done at home if you haven't seen it already. To all the uh, subscribers out there that have turned on the notifications, thank you very much. If you want to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, you can do that at Power Republic. We can go to our website, www.powerrepublic.com.au, grab yourself a t shirt or Rotax Max DD2 race engine. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.